Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. What do you get when you mix two white boys? Both named Mike. A thing for Justin Timberlake and a piercing above your eye. Was he high? Their stories alone could make you cry. That's when you want to make your Irish goodbye. Hi there. Hola. Welcome. Tomo que amo. Como te amos. Yes. What did I say? Tomo que amos? <laughs> yeah. Ugh. You want to, you're asking me my name? I was trying to bring in our international audience because we've grown leaps and bounds over the last few weeks. It's pretty crazy. It is. It has been It has been a nice uptick. A lot of sea translation tweets. Yes. Yeah, which has <laughs> yeah. been pretty great. I mean, you know, I'm not going to lie. We've always been pretty transparent with our reach and our, uh, and our status. But I think at this point, we're kind of bigger than the network. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's I, I wouldn't mind a rebranding of a, you know, maybe like a... Well, it could be, maybe we could be the FAC network, like Feeney and Cannon, or the CAF, like right. a little, like a little injured baby calf. <laughs> that, that, Lewis a, will still stay in there. He's the L in the calf. <laughs> what a, also, what a logo showing strength! This just a feeble calf with a twisted yeah, ankle. Just a veal. Feeney and Cannon network. <laughs> a veal. Yeah. <laughs> You're debilitated and fucking paralyzed from the start. But boy, will you taste good later. Oh. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Irish Goodbye Podcast. I am one of your hosts. A storytelling podcast. Let's mm-hmm. not forget that. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Cannon, with me as always. It's me, Mike Feeney. Hi, how are you? How are you feeling? I'm great. I've uh, I realized it's like, you know, we've been, we've been real loosey-goosey because we haven't had many stories to live, and now I feel like I have... Some stories, so this is nice. You've lived a life, a life worth commenting on. Well, well you know, we had we had Thanksgiving and stuff, and they have, um, this is Well, not- if you have any stories about Thanksgiving, just know you should go directly to jail. Why? Because nobody's allowed to have any Thanksgiving stories or love. Oh, oh, yeah, no, we didn't have a party. <laughs> well, here's a fun thing. My, so my uh, mom's side of the family did, they got, like, I think there was one, two, three, I think eight of them or something. And they Deaths? were, they, no, no, oh. they went to, they got a house together and they just all, like, they got tested and then they all just went to there for Thanksgiving. Wow, and, a little, a little mini Kardashian getaway for the Feenies. Yeah, I guess so. You saw that, right? Yeah. Her, her yeah. Instagram I mean, post that where was... she's like, listen, we all have to just get away sometimes. So, yeah. of course, after like three weeks of quarantining and rapid tests that we took from people on, <laughs> on ventilators, we, uh, we were able to rent out Epstein's Island. Yeah, I mean they got they got a whole place, didn't they? Like a whole Yeah, I think they actually got a took an full island, island yeah. of, you know, just I uh, they have to be probably like during the day shooting for the TV show and then at night removing parts of their men's brains <laughs> just so they can, you know, drain them of all their energy and yeah. positivity. Yeah. Continue to have storylines. That's right. Yeah. So but uh but a fun thing my uncle called me. I talked to my mom in the morning, you know, on Thanksgiving and stuff and I was talking to my uncle and he goes well, uh, he goes, you know, we're we're over here. We woke up this morning. We, uh, you know, we all got together. We had mimosas and eggs Benedict. And he goes, we started drinking before 9 a.m. I can't tell if that's a new high or a new low for this family. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a high. Yeah, it's score. both. It's, it's both, a high score. I guess. Yeah, that was like the time that I was with them uh, for Christmas in Key Largo a couple years back. And we woke up and we were doing presents and we all had mimosas. And then uh, my uncle was like, oh, have you ever had... Like a, it's basically like a a sparkling, a sparkling uh, 007 or what was the a screwdriver? I guess basically. Yeah. So it made, I made like a screwdriver in the morning, topped with champagne. Oh and yeah. So it was just yeah. like it was like a mimosa, but it also had vodka in it. That's like how Britney Spears used to add vodka to her lean. Yeah, dude. It <laughs> Do was. You know that's what she. So Lil Wayne doesn't even go that far. Lil Wayne used to put like the cough syrup in a Sprite bottle and then mix it up. Or yeah. So I saw in the Carter documentary, Britney Spears used to do one third Gatorade, one third or no, I'm sorry, one third Red Bull, one third fucking uh, lean, and then one third vodka. Yikes. She's the best. <laughs> I bet she. Could you imagine how much ass she ate just because she was in some fucking drug induced mania? Yeah, she's. Uh, I I really pray for her. You know. I don't. I would love to for her to land on my lap and just leave my wife and solidify my financial future. Yeah, I don't. Well, you'd have to. You you should go after her dad then. That's um, Jamie. That's the, yeah, he's Jamie the one Lynn with Spears. all the money. So you should be the one. <laughs> yeah, I could usurp his power though. I feel like I could figure out a way to get through to the judicial system that I am in fact the responsible party for my fiance's, mm. uh, you know, well being. Okay. Well, if K-Fed couldn't do it.
<laughs> yeah, I mean, K Fed is still getting fed. What is he doing now? Um, living, living off of a thirty million dollar a month and <laughs> like whatever. Yeah. What do you get when you're a kid? Alimony. Oh, no. allowance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you're a child, you know when you collect alimony. Yeah. Well, I was going for the actual term, but then right. you went to the good thing. <laughs> um, but no, that I remember that that fucking Christmas. I like went. I like woke up, opened presents, and then had to pass out and go back to bed for yes. a while. You know. Well, here. So I want to comment a little bit on the uh, a new high or a new low yes. for the for the family at this point. I think we've talked about it on the show before, but especially when I was drinking and like when Hurricane Sandy came about or any any like natural disaster that really shut down how civilization typically operates. Yeah. I took that as an opportunity to live like a full pirate. Like mm-hmm. it would be whiskey in the morning, be blunts all day, you know, pretty much exactly how I'd like to live every single day is now green lit because it's an emergency. Now right. This whole year has basically been that, so there's no way to really gauge your behavior based on norms. Yeah, I guess not, and it doesn't seem as though there's an end in sight. So that's that's kind well, of that's why we like... all can become alcoholics <laughs> and not feel any guilt, <laughs> no shame whatsoever. Um, yeah, I didn't even get guilt from him. I got more just like matter of fact, <laughs> like, just know? like man, that was just impressively Early. destructive. Eight <laughs> thirty. But... I mean, well, let's. Should, so wait, you have more to this? Um, not about that. But my Thanksgiving was actually great. Erica and I stayed at home. She made an entire thirteen pound turkey for the two of us. Made nice. everything. She killed it. But I, my my story that I'll have is more about um, is more about Black Friday. Oh, interesting. Um, but I'll let you. I'll toss it to you for. I believe it's POC Friday now. Oh boy. Yeah, it's a wider scope of things. But um, Thanksgiving. I mean, especially in New York, you know, everybody has been basically. If you look your parent in the eye, you're gonna kill them. Uh, that's yeah. been that's been the mainstream media's, uh, you know, main message uh and i was <laughs> going stream i like a lot of people was going to pretty much hunker down for a little bit make sure to be safe and yeah. then meet up with my actually with my family we we're right. going to have thanksgiving at my sister's um but then the covid case that swept the comedy community has just washed upon us yeah thank you uh i guess i can't say his name but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. but the uh, fucking patient zero and then you know what somebody who i will name eric newman you piece of shit you Uh-oh. posted on facebook so i don't give a fuck this son of a bitch i saw he so he he gets covid right uh-huh. and of course he's at the comedy cellar because why wouldn't you be he got rapid tested the day he went to the cellar of course that has about an eight percent accuracy so he was right. like good enough went to an indoor show and that or hang dinner and then uh you know was wearing a mask and i I saw him and this was one incident where I like I remember in the moment being like I'm pissed but I'm not going to say anything because I, I don't think it's a big deal right. but it's one of those things where like everybody's masked up right we're indoors everybody's trying to you know maintain distance but also we're indoors so we're not going to be able to spread far and wide sure. so everybody's doing the elbow thing whatever the fist bump I don't care I'm down with that I wash my hands really regularly so I go in I like I elbow bumped him and I'm like moving on to say hello to other people and he elbow bumps me and then slaps me on the back and places his hand on my bare neck yeah. and was like good to see you buddy and then walked out and in the moment I was like I want to cut his hands off. <laughs> I'm so mad. I haven't been touched like that by yeah. somebody, not in my immediate circle in sure. a really long time. So paranoia, red alerts are going off. But again, like I'm pretty, I'm pretty self-aware that I might be overreacting. So I mentioned nothing until Saturday when, or uh, Saturday of that week. So it was the week before Thanksgiving. He posts like, Sorry, guys, I got COVID, and it's bad. He's like, turns oh, out this no. is, like, legit. And he's like, everybody that I get, a, you know, that I that I made contact with, just get yourself checked out. And I didn't know. I saw that on Facebook while he was texting me about marketing advice for his fucking special. <laughs> and then in the middle of that, he's like, oh, by the way, dude, I, like, tested positive for this weird deadly virus that's been going around. <laughs> he's like, you just might want to get checked. And I'm like, cool, the week before a family potential oh, get-together. No. And I was livid. There was no test to be had everybody was doing the rush test to get to be able to meet up with their families yeah. so i i was i didn't get to hang with my family it was kind of a depressing you know a, a bit of reality but we had sure. a great thanksgiving either way i mean we cooked at our place it was with uh it was with nicole's parents and crew and he had the time of his life he was really enjoying himself so not all all was lost but still really yeah, it sucks really infuriating yeah that sucks you know? though <laughs> well i just like the the thing is cool yeah, there's yeah. no reason to put an extra like. There's no reason to touch the back of somebody's neck ever. Ever. 
Ever. Not in the winter. Like it, I mean, yeah, any it, any month, <laughs> you know, especially the summer because you're hot and sweaty. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's reason in any season <laughs> not to touch me, but in the winter, it's the reason of the season. <laughs> Don't touch my fucking neck. <laughs> What I used to do in high school football, me and this kid Eddie, we were both defensive backs, and you know we we played the the cornerbacks. We were yeah. wide out, and then there were two safeties. We played a four three, so we would each play the man coverage on either side. But the DBs would get together in between defensive plays, and we'd just be freezing because it was so fucking cold. Whipping winds, we're off the Hudson, all that stuff, and it, neither of us wore gloves. So every time that we'd like kind of huddle up and like discuss our coverages, he'd turn, and then I'd put my cold hand up his back <laughs> and it would just fucking ruin his day. <laughs> There's nothing that makes me happy. There is that. he like put it under his armpit or something to keep warm. You know? <laughs> no, no, that would be my loss. Yeah, yeah. I oh, everyone. I don't like a gooey sure. pit. Um, also, I just want to say as a, uh, I don't really have much of a story on this, but from a couple of weeks ago, thank you to everybody who came out to Uncle Vinny's when I was there um, a few weeks back. Because that was, it was so fun. We had, uh, you know, the Staples, Court and Kev came oh, out and, uh, and they just got a new dog too, which is nice. awesome. But uh, but yeah, we saw uh, uh, Chris Johnson was there opening up. He did great. The running he killed. back. Yeah, the running back. It's times are tough for all of us. <laughs> he's got to open up for me at Uncle Vinny's. But, Who, who's uh, Chris Johnson? Uh, he's a comic. You you would know his face. Uh, pull him up. He's one of the. He opens for the Jokers, Impractical Jokers. Oh okay. Um, but he's uh, he was a funny oh and dude. Brewer. Maybe no, not that guy. What was that though? What? <laughs> but he was uh, okay. Uh, but he was. Um, I don't even want to go on. <laughs> that was that was that was Alex's uh, daily uh, microdose yeah. alarm. <laughs> so, uh, but I was just I just did a lot of new, baby, mm-hmm. lot oh new. That's what I plan to bring to the table tonight. Yeah, it was, uh, but it was very good. And then, um, so I want to talk about this. I did. So the Black Friday comes. I finally stepped up. I ordered uh, a new camera to get myself into the 21st century. I've had this Canon 60D since for 10 years now. I bought yeah. it. My family months- makes good equipment. Yes, yeah, they do. I always and I always mess up typing Canon now because I it it auto corrects to double N. Oh, yeah. So I so I I had this Canon 60D that I bought off an Asian dude off Craigslist in a parking lot in Jersey ten years ago. Five hundred cash. Fort Lee. Uh, it was probably probably <laughs> if I had to. I don't know. <laughs> Fort Lee, I guess. Yeah, um, that's a good regional bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but so I was going to say what they actually call it, but I'm like, oh, I hear a cat and a gong in my future. If Fort I... Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so, the great American general, Robert E. Ree. Yeah. <laughs> So we, um, we, you know, I, I had this camera. It's been great, but I was like, it's time for an upgrade. I got to get into the, you know, 4K and all these new stuff. So I get this killer camera. I order it on Tuesday. It says it's going to be here on Friday. So I'm like, perfect. This is great. I'm shooting a sketch Saturday. <laughs> Your life is a series of a nightmarish deliverables. I think, I think. All of my luck in my life has gone into my parking spots, <laughs> and it has been at, a, at the cost of yeah. getting things delivered to my fucking house. Yeah. So, Dude, I think that about love. Like, I have such a oh, great no. relationship with oh. my wife, and I'm so happy that it's come like that is what's come at the expense of my career. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, the reason I'm not wildly successful is because I've already lucked out in another field, and I'm yeah. like, I'd give that up in a heartbeat. <laughs> So it's the next day. It's so it's Black Friday. I'm waiting for this package to come. I wake up and I'm waking up like a kid on Christmas morning, being like, "This new camera that I'm gonna have is here. I'm so excited. It's getting here. It's gonna. It said like delivery by 9 p.m. that day. So I'm basically not doing anything that day except waiting for this delivery. And it's UPS, not FedEx, unlike the other time. So I have okay. hope because the, the UPS guy. I know the UPS guy is a good dude. You went with Brown. Yes. On yes. Black Friday. I'm down with Brown Town. Yes. So um, I so I wake up. And Erica's immediately, I like open the door and Erica's like, there's a problem. And I'm like, I'm like yawning still. And she goes, it said attempted delivery, 928 AM, which was just, you know, a half hour, not even a half hour earlier. She goes, but the bell didn't ring or no one rang. Like I was here just sitting on the couch, but I got a notification on my phone that said that. What do you think these people do? Because I have, I've had 
I mean, I'm sure everybody's had this experience before. Do you think they walk to your bell thing and then like pretend to touch it? And <laughs> well, don't, like like Chris Farley in Black Sheep with the bat, he just like kind of sweeps yeah, over it and he's yeah, like, "You didn't, you totally <laughs> didn't touch it." Um, so it was definitely. So if this was FedEx, that's definitely what they did that mm. time. They didn't feel like delivering the heavy uh, mattress and bed frame and stuff. So, but with this time. I'm going, what the hell? So it goes, it wasn't delivered. I look downstairs. There's no door tag saying, sorry, we missed you. So I'm a little suspicious. So I call up UPS and they go, um, and they go, yeah, it looks like it wasn't delivered. And I go, but it says attempted delivery. And I was home. So can you just tell them like to come back or whatever? Mm. And they go, they go, yeah, it actually looks like it's not on the truck at all. And that it's, it was never attempted delivery. I'm like, okay. And they go, yeah, it says it's still at the facility. It's labeled under holiday bail or something so it's a, it, now it might not it's, it's it's in the bin for letters to santa yeah yeah so they go <laughs> it's not coming now they're going to attempt to deliver it again it's, it's headed into the incinerator with the rest of the children's <laughs> dreams yeah and it was one of those things too where just the little way she phrased it made me mad she goes mm. they're going to reattempt to deliver it on monday and i go not reattempt attempt yeah because yeah. you never there attempted never, the first time there was never a first it's attempt. never on the truck so then i go you know, I, I technically don't need the camera by tomorrow, but it's just the principle of it that makes me angry. It's so I go, principality. so I go, I, I gotta get this thing today. This is crazy. I shouldn't have to wait. And I go, I know where the facility is in Long Island City. Like, I will drive to it. Can I go get it? If it if it isn't on the truck, she goes, it might still be on the truck. And I go, but you said it wasn't on the truck. And uh-huh. she goes, no, it might. It's probably not on the truck. It's probably there. And so I can change the delivery to uh, to pick up. And I go, okay. So you're gonna schedule the pickup. And she goes, yes. And I go, so I can go to the Long Island City branch and I can go pick it up. And she goes, call us back in like two hours to make sure they do it. <laughs> yeah. So I go, okay. So I I switch it. So she goes, you, you're running the risk of whatever the fuck. And I go, what's the risk? She goes. You know, whatever. So I switch it to pickup. I call back a couple hours later because I get a notification saying it's at the it's ready for pickup for the next five hours. So mm. I go, is it there? Because I've did this with FedEx where I've gone all the way there and then it's not fucking there. So I'm just making sure before I leave that you get on the phone with somebody there and it says it's there. And by the way, each time I'm calling. It's like a nightmare to get anybody on the phone right, because right, it's right. like entering. Nobody wants to get on the phone, so you have to enter the tracking number every time, your zip code, and then they keep trying to be like, "You should just email us your answer, yeah, yeah. fuckface." Why you know? not go to ups.com? Yeah, and it's like, so yeah, it's just, I definitely didn't think of that. Yeah, so it's all doing that over. So it takes like you know 10, 15 minutes to get someone on the phone every time, but they confirm, yes, it's there. So all of a sudden, I'm like, "Let's go!" It's like 2 p.m. I'm with Erica. We drop everything. We I bring her in the car with me because I'm like, I don't even know if there's parking. Just stay in the car. I'll be five seconds. I go in the facility. They go, what do you do here to do? Pick up? Yep. And they go write down the order number on this piece of paper, all COVID. And I go, great. And I hand it to her and they go, and then she goes like this and some guy runs up with headphones and grabs them and runs away to go fetch the package. Yeah. And He's uh, bleeding from his eyes yeah, from COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there kind of being like, all right, everything, uh, everything works out. And he's taken a little while to come back. So I'm like, that's fine because I'm sure he's got to sort through a whole facility. And then I see him start walking back. And what doesn't he have in his hands, Mike? (laughs) The package. And so he comes back and he goes, "Um, yeah, uh, this package, I don't know why they told you it's ready for pickup. It's not ready for pickup. And I go, is it on the truck? Is it here? Is it not here? They go, oh, it's here, but it's loaded onto the trailer, the holiday trailer. And And this is, if you remember from when I was doing the FedEx thing, they said it was in the back of the trailer in my bed and they couldn't unload it. This is the same thing. They go, and he guy, he goes, oh, your camera, yeah, it's on. It's in the back of a loaded up trailer. We're not gonna unload that entire thing to go look for a camera. And I was like, okay. <laughs> well, weirdly enough, you are. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, but uh, it said it was gonna be delivered today. He's like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. It sounds like it's it's not coming. It's definitely not coming today. And he goes, so if I were you, what I'd do is I'd call UPS back. I'd get someone on the phone like. Pretty soon. Because Did you say all... I'm at UPS? <laughs> yeah. He goes, I'd get, I'd, I'd call customer service like now, and if I were you, and try. And he's like looking at it because it's almost four o'clock. He's uh. like, I'd call pretty quick if I were you. Get somebody on the phone. Switch it back to delivery, so that way they can d- try and deliver it tomorrow Saturday. And I go, can I just come pick it up here tomorrow Saturday? And he goes, no. We're not open tomorrow, Saturday, for pickup. So otherwise, you'd have to get it. As it stands now, because you switched it to pickup, now you're not getting it until Monday. And I was like, you told me to switch to pickup so that I could get it today and not Monday. I don't like the power you have over my anger. So, because so, you've built this to a point where now I'm in your shoes and I feel like it's happening to me now. And I'm ready to fight you thinking you work for UPS. <laughs> 
and they're not giving me any sort of like they're doing a yeah we're sorry but you know it is what it like as it stands now <laughs> they're like muttering Gaylord under yeah. their breath they're like this fucking idiot <laughs> so I I leave there and and to be honest I walked in with low expectations because I've been burned so many times by FedEx and you know in deliveries before so I didn't really have a full expectation but even when it happens you're crushed so then I call UPS back it takes this time this time because they updated in the system. Every time I put the uh, tracking number in, it says, like, no one can answer the phone for this tracking number. Mm. Like, this is all we got. This is all the information. No one's going to be able to tell you anything different. Thanks for calling and disconnect. So I have to call back over and over again saying I want to place an order to pick up something. To pick Mike's cracking his neck. To pick up something. And it takes 45 minutes to get somebody on the phone. Did you do it there? No, no. Oh, I would have sat in their (laughs) fucking office and been like, yeah, I'll I'll call. I'll call from here and I'm going to keep it on speaker. And it was 40... Five minutes to get somebody on the phone. They answered at like 3.55 or something like that. And uh, and they switched it back to delivery. So I was like, okay, so now we'll try and get Saturday. And then the saga has a beautiful conclusion where Saturday at like noon, the fucking, we got a notification saying it was delivered, would, needed a signature, didn't have a signature, but now they're just like, it's COVID, so... Sorry, we just signed yeah. for it and slung it into yeah. your fucking lobby of your... Don't worry, we left it in a very stealable place. Yeah, so then I had to... But I ran down the stairs. I felt like Michael Scott in the office where you like he like trips down the first set of stairs, gets himself up, and then trips down the second set of stairs. Try to say goodbye to Pam before yeah, she leaves yeah, for New York. Yeah. I do that down all three flights. I wrote a poem. It's yeah. really long. Yeah, I last, plagiarized a lot of it. The, la- the last line is about birds and how, how high you can fly. Um, and so I got the camera on, on Saturday. Day, but it was just like, Jesus Christ, can nothing ever be simple with fucking deliveries to it's, me, man? It's fun that you mention this because I'm I'm on a high right now. I, I feel very positive. I feel good. I just had I, I was just away for the last four days filming something, and it was exactly what I needed because it was the exact opposite of Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. So if you're if you're a fan of the pod, I think that episode is still up for free somewhere or those two episodes where I just waxed poetically, but either not but even not sign up at gasdigitalnetwork.com and all that stuff is behind the paywall. But using I, code IGP? Using code IGP, it's it's weird that like certain things that you have expectations for basically become the exact opposite of that and then you go into something being like well this is going to be basically a frank rigatone shoot like it's not going to be professional it's going to be slapped together whatever and then it's the exact opposite experience and it's a more well-oiled machine than what was supposed to be a big studio thing earlier right you know what i mean so <clears throat> but it wouldn't be me if it didn't have some fuck ups. Sure. So I had known that this was leading up. I was kind of, I was kind of glad that Thanksgiving got pushed because it gave me another couple days to quarantine and make sure I was okay from the fucking back slap hurt around the world. Yeah. And so they they overnighted us COVID tests that we had to send out through UPS to the lab to get tested. It's this weird app. I don't know if you uh, have ever heard of it, but it's Let's Get Checked, the app. And so I thought it's like just developed for covid all this stuff turns out it's like std tests pregnancy tests sense. whatever you want it's overnighted tests you get them all checked out oh, wow. it's so funny that that shit just like exists and is expedited in that type of impersonal way yeah <clears throat> but so i get i get the test on tuesday from ups no problem there came came right away and then we had to wait till friday to send it because they wanted a post thanksgiving sample um even though that means nothing since it was less right. than 24 hours the day before but you have to you have to self boogie yourself you know do the little toilet up your own nose and then you know drive it to the ups drop off and boom the next morning it's gone it'll be there saturday test results will be in i'll get there sunday night by monday it'll have my results i'll get rapid tests at the site all this stuff the whole thing's set up, right? So I take the test Friday morning. I wake up super early because I'm like, I'm getting it to fucking UPS early. It's going to be a same day delivery. I need to make sure that it goes out yeah. and is, and is you know, collected correctly. So I take the test, drive it to UPS, feel a, you know, large load off my shoulders. And then I'm checking it all the next day, even though it says, you know, the whole time it's like, yes, we'll be delivered end of day Saturday. And then it kind of changed to vague, like, Yeah, we still have it. (laughs) In transit? Dude, it didn't say any date or anything like that. They're like, it exists. 
Yeah. We're not going to tell you where or when it is yeah. or what's happening with it, but it, it's no, just we, know, we've, we've seen it. Yeah, we've just definitely know, seen it. Just know we have it. Yeah. Um, so I get there by the time even Sunday then I'm tracking it has not reached the lab yet. And now I'm getting picked up to be driven to fucking Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and I still don't have the results. And it's the lab doesn't have it. They don't have it. There's emails back and forth. They're asking me to call UPS, which I promptly declined and said, sounds like a job for you. <laughs> uh, and they did that, which is good because I was all on my own for the other you know for the other project right so it it doesn't make it there it gets there i end up having to just go by rapid testing basically monday like when i when i got on set so i got rapid tested several times and basically if there was one negative or one positive it, it would have been over like right. that's it you know even if it was false it doesn't matter so i uh I, I get all these rapid tests. I pass with flying colors, uh, all of them. And then Monday Monday night, I get a notification on the app that is like, your test is in, and it's good. <laughs> like I was like, it's good. And then I look, and it was like negative. Like it, it, but it was vague. The whole thing was so vague. I'm not explaining it properly, but the good was almost like that. It it looked like it meant positive yeah, like yeah. I, I was like what what the fuck is going on and then it had i had to like it's like climb. The, you know when they do like pros and cons but it's like pluses and minuses they're like positive yes. you're negative yeah it was exactly <laughs> that it was exactly that and i'm just like what the fuck does that mean and i had to like click through the app and try to like expand certain details right. to find out that i was negative and it's like all right thank god like yeah. at least i got that and i didn't just cough fucking locusts on an entire group of people but i just shot this thing and I'll tell you, dude, it was one of the more fun projects that I've done in a really long time. I mean, you know, with comics, we know each other. We're familiar with with the business, with our business, mm -hmm. I should say, because the business, you never feel more like a show business outsider than you're when you're with people in show business proper. Yeah. You know, it's so fucking gnarly. So I'm there, and I don't know if you have this. This might be a me problem. But I'm a lot of it is. But I'm like a I'm a cynical guy in the sense where I go there and I'm like these motherfuckers like don't know what they're doing like they don't know what they're talking about like yeah. I, I'm in comedy like blah 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 you know I I I'm just like this is all cornball shit like what they're talking about it's all L A cornball shit yeah. and I and I like am listening to my inner monologue try to poison my consciousness and I decided that's not happening. So I pushed those fucking thoughts out of my head and I was like, listen, just take this with open arms, just vibe however you want, meet these people, take them as brand new people that you've never met, clean slate, all that stuff. And it was fucking awesome. I literally, we make fun of sexy versus ganky all the time, Cosmo. Yeah. But that is literally the last project where I've worked with somebody where I had an instant like chemistry, friendship, all that stuff. Yeah. We just Hurtful instantly to vibe. Say to me in front of me, to me. We're but... comics. I'm saying this is yeah, this yeah, is yeah. something different. We obviously are friends, and and <sighs> I mean, you know, it's fallen off lately, but. <laughs> <laughs> So you felt that too. Yes. No, so. <laughs> so hold yeah. on. So I'm, I I'm. I guess I can say who was who was in it because uh, I was with I was with like you know people that are in the business. So I was with one guy, Jay Rodriguez, who was on the original Queer Eye, okay. right? And he he's worked. He's he's on like a ton of TV shows, doing acting work and stuff like that. And the way he was talking about show business, I was like, man, this is so. It's so weird just how our lives are completely different because it's all about next project, next project for them and like how I can get booked and angle myself and sell myself and what is my agent doing? And they're like, so what about you? And I'm like, I'm on like Patreon and I have a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, you know, I monetize my YouTube and I have album money coming in. Like, you know, they, I'm surviving and they're like, you, you, you sound like a, I, I sound like Ted Kaczynski to them, basically. Yeah, yeah. Like I own my own shack in the middle of a meadow in Washington. All right. And they're like, oh, you couldn't be more pushed apart from this fucking entire business. Um, but it it did also shed a really funny light on like our fans and our and the responses that we get as comedians because I was talking to Tahiri, who is from Love and Hip Hop, and again, this is like a woman who is so glitzed out, like all fucking bling, big earrings, like really dressed well, and and I my immediate judgment is like, I have nothing in common with yeah. her. Like I, I, you know, she she's living like a legitimate hip hop life, and I'm 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 living here. Right. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing a podcast in a broom closet, you know, where we're both coughing directly into each other's tonsils, <laughs> and so she. It, it, but instantly, really great woman. We talk, we we vibed. We had uh, awesome chemistry. She was hilarious. This was also her first like 
thing where she could give her opinion in long form. So it turns out that she was super nervous, which is always really great to see yeah. when somebody with millions of followers on whatever is like stepping into a new arena and right. they're like, man, I, you know, you guys are really great at this. You feel, you feel prepared and stuff. And I'm kind of sitting here frightened and I'm like, you're the name. You're why the show yeah. is going. Like yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. the reason this is this is well, what it even is. More pressure for her. Uh, yeah, I guess. And you know, but it, but it it was kind of nice to see that. But also, it was funny because like again, she has over two million followers on Instagram, and I'm like trying to fill them in to our feedback and like some of the stuff people call us online. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you know, this, this, and this, <laughs> and you know, I'm I'm a bad comic, a bad father, and a fat gay lord. Like that's like more or less my comments all the time. And she's like, oh man, like I. I don't I don't get that at all. <laughs> like you're on Love and Hip Hop yeah. and you have 2 million followers and that horrified you? Yeah. Like my my sample size of 25,000 followers or whatever the fuck it is yeah. is just that much more of a concentrated pool of evil than whatever 100%, 2 million is coming from. 100%. <laughs> it is. Is that even close? I feel like. And also that's such a funny thing cuz I do feel like she must have had like a, you know, a person she must have a person that like filters out those negative There's, yeah. I mean just off the anybody that posts a thing right like, or she's really great at just ignoring it because she told me she does like she responds to comments and she yeah. tries to stay engaged and she has an OnlyFans and all this stuff so she's like pivoting with with the new world right. order uh, as well and so it, but it was funny to like see her just kind of like oh yeah. that's that's what you're going through yeah, and I'm yeah. like you should have it worse. Why, yeah, why, yeah, why don't yeah. you? Uh, this is like this is also my first group project where like when I was doing sexy versus skanky and we had drinking episodes, I took that as a challenge and right. I was drinking more than everybody on set. Sure. You know, this where everybody was, you know, they were all having wine, all that stuff. I didn't know what to do. So I was I was just smoking weed in between set. Like I was going outside. Once I found out, they're like, Oh yeah, it's like Go smoke pot outside. We don't give a fuck. And yeah. I was like literally just blazing L's outside of this fucking studio. It was awesome. I yeah. was like, I was like, I feel unprofessional, but I also kind of feel like Chappelle. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. at work and they're allowing me to smoke weed. There's nothing better. Sure. And, but I'm also like that first day tired. You know, it's 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 an early call time. It's an all day thing. So I'm matching them with coffee and they're drinking wine. And I think I'm white knuckling a little bit because I feel like I'm missing out. Yeah. So I'm I had I had uh, I ended up. Having two large Starbucks coffees oh my God. and two large Red Bulls. Why to do because that? Because I don't know. Because <laughs> I was nervous about not drinking and I felt completely left out and yeah. I needed, in the words of D, to tweak on something. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So the the end of the day goes and I like we sprinted through it, literally sprinted through it and crushed all day, had a really great first yeah. day. And then we all were gonna meet at this restaurant to to just like sit and have a group, you know, group dinner together, really get to know each other. And so we're sitting down and they're all talking and I'm I'm literally you ever you ever in your head when like three other people are having a great time and you're just focused on how you appear to be feeling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, all right, just just make it through because I'm starting to get like real chest clenching heart palpitations sure. mixed with like legitimate nausea swings Ugh. so like it feels almost like molly when it rolls like over shaky. you but it's a wave of sickness mm -hmm. so i'm like i'm like try i i hadn't eaten also so i'm like taking a mott stick and i'm like trying to dip it in the marinara and i'm like <laughs> missing and hitting other foods and and i'm just like sitting there and i'm keeping it together and people are asking me stuff and i'm like yeah 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 and then at nowhere i'm like I gotta go, guys. I was like, I, I am, I, I, in my head this whole time, I have made a decision. I was like, I've, I've been thinking, should I pass out in front of you guys? <laughs> yeah, like, should yeah. I allow my head to hit the table and then frighten you and potentially throw off the rest of the days, or do I leave? And I just, fight, and they're like, oh my god, like what? You're going through that? <laughs> like, not, no comic would ever be that, ex that accepting. Sure. And uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, so sorry. And they're like, dude, get the hell out of here. It's perfectly fine. I walk down the street, which, by the way, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, what a delightfully lovely quaint town. Oh, Christmassy? It's a Christmas village. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, Bethlehem. <laughs> like, it just came in my head. Somebody was like, yeah, it's Bethlehem. Like, yeah. don't you think that's probably why they're big on Christmas? And I was like, 
yeah, now I do. Yeah. I'll <laughs> never not think anything else. <laughs> I totally put that together, but yeah. it never once crossed my mind before this. Yeah. So I go into my hotel room and I got this stuff where I have a CBD tincture bottle and it's like 3,000 to 5,000 milligrams. Like it's pretty heavy stuff. Yeah. I drank the entire bottle. Oh no. I drank the whole bottle because I needed to offset the fire that I, that I, you know, just fed in my own yeah, fucking yeah. body. And I like literally strapped myself to the bed and waited it out for like three and a half hours. Oh my God. Do you didn't throw up or anything? I did. Yeah. You I did? did? Yeah, I did. I did throw up. I was going to leave that out. But... <laughs> <laughs> I threw up and it was there was no food. It was all like just clear Red, Red Bull. Bull. Yeah. It was so fucking oh my awful God, on the that's way disgusting. back. Disgusting. Yeah, but I gotta give a shout. Like that whole I think I might have left with like another job too, which couldn't possibly be better. You know, yeah. you get you, you get these opportunities and obviously things are so weird right now. So to be to be able to like have a really good time with people that you didn't think you'd vibe with, but you vibed really great with, and everything went really well. And who knows what this project could become? Sure, it like it, it was just a very positive I- experience. So I'm uh, I want to include those in the podcast so it doesn't seem like I'm just a complainy bitch. Yeah, all the time. No, it sounds like uh, your little baby puke boy who uh... <laughs> baby puke boy. <laughs> I, I mean, that is the symptom of like wild age, right? It's like, guys, I gotta go home. I had too much Red Bull. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I haven't hundred. had a Red Bull in years. I used to have one every morning, like when I was yeah. in like high school. I haven't had one in fucking years. I don't think since college, dude. I was like, I once I went to full time coffee, I never looked back. I mean, I felt awesome during yeah. the day, even in between takes. I'm literally getting up and like shadow boxing, yeah. going up to the producer yeah, yeah. who's like wearing a mask and I'm not and I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> just shadow boxing because I've known him for years it's like okay 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 you yeah. must have been pumped to, I, I, like I, I imagine you in between takes right after you smoke so you had that perfect thing of like blunt high but red bull oh, so you yeah. still have the energy so you're not you feel it but you're not like groggy and stuff yeah. and then you know you're out there you're probably just on your phone reading all our five star reviews and yeah! you're getting fucking souped up right because wow. there's so many of them uh, souped like barley hell yeah baby uh hurry up and uh, leave us a five star review if you haven't it helps uh, tell a friend about the podcast we love that you guys uh spread this word of mouth it's uh it's great and don't forget we are we do have our episodes uh, on youtube as well if you want to watch for free the most recent uh uh, episodes and uh, our power hour is still on there. That one I love. People have been doing the power yeah. hour, which is great. Sending and... us some pretty troubling DMs. <laughs> yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's great. But thank I you love guys. that. Love that you guys went to a hundred, man. I, I like felt pretty drunk at sixty, but then at a hundred, I was ready to leave my family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was great. So thank you everyone who's uh, watched Adam for all the lovely feedback on that Irish Goodbye podcast on all social media and uh, use the if you want to support the show in other ways, get a guest digital network subscription using the code I. IGP. You get a yeah. two-week free trial. Uh, you can watch all of our episodes from the beginning with the Sopranos of Podcasts. We're over 200 episodes in. You can watch all of them. Uh, HD video, the audio. You got all the other podcasts on the network, all their backlog stuff, all of our bonus content. There's so much shit on there. It's crazy. It's insane. We're one of the few shows on the network also that actually poured some effort into the yeah. bonus footage. And not to mention, it gives you a discount to podcast merch. Podcast baby. merch. So we, we got, got our classics up there now. Yeah. We got the shirt. We got t-shirts. We got hoodies. The uh, holiday sale is over. The holiday sale is over. Hopefully you guys uh, scooped up. We know that... Uh, People, the beanies were doing really well, so I'm glad that people got some beanies and some. Yeah. Uh, ho- if you t- if you got a holiday hoodie, please uh, take a picture, tag us in the picture. We want to see our mugs on your beautiful chest. On your tits, yeah. yeah we want to see our, our mugs on your tits. Yeah. And also, I would love a hoodie as well. And never got an answer when I requested one, uh, buddy. I, I'll. <laughs> I'm still waiting on. It'll mine. be a cold day in hell. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it'll be a hot day probably by the time I get the hoodies. <laughs> um, but regardless, uh, you guys, uh, we do support, appreciate you supporting the show. Uh, we love you guys for it. It's, uh, and like I said, keep keep telling people about it. You can also check out our uh, Patreon. What's the scenario with uh, Brendan Sagalo, Mike, and myself? Where it's a completely different show where we just answer questions from the fans that are all hypotheticals, what ifs, kind of a thing. It's fun. It's uh, reverent you know how every comic's like we're just a reverent comedian so right. it's uh but it's silly and it's fun i mean we do what we do if you listen to this 
show, you know what it's like and you know our sensibility. So if you're into that, but with a completely different topic set, no stories whatsoever, completely escapism, hypotheticals and yeah. scenarios and shit, then you'll love the We're show. Just check it out. differentiating the two enough for sure. And That's then right. um, you guys also uh, should be watching our stuff. Please go watch my stand-up special, Rage Against the Routine, available now on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can also listen to it anywhere you listen to podcast, uh, anywhere you listen to music, actually. Spotify, it's on there, wherever you gotta go. And, um, you know, when you see it on Pandora or something, give it a thumbs up. But yeah, spread the, spread the YouTube special around. I've got videos coming out every single week uh, on my YouTube, my social media, at I'm, at I, at I am Mike Feeney on social media, Mike Feeney Comedy on YouTube. And, uh, oh, I did just add a date, which is not up on my website yet, but December 19th, I will be at City Steam in Hartford. Oh, nice. And that will, I'm almost assuredly will be my last gig of 2020. So yeah. uh, so if you're in Connecticut, come out to that super limited seating because they got because it is indoors, so there's yeah, social distancing. I think distancing. one and a half people can go. Yeah, they're social. I think it's like they have like, I don't know, like 40 or 50 tickets max in that mm. place or something. So get get tickets now. It's at comedycraftbeer.com uh, and uh, that'll that'll be a fun that'll be a fun gig. And outside of that, uh, Mike, what do you got? So Again, this is a pitch we give every single week, but if you can't financially support us, we completely understand that. Everybody's going through their own thing right now. It's tough times out there for a pimp. But for us, the currency is in the subscription. So the free yes. stuff that you do, and I understand that we give you this pitch every single week, but it's so important because we know that not all of you are doing so, and you may not be not on the platform, but yeah, it's not even close. So it, we, we just need supporters, motivated individuals to freely click subscribe on Irish Goodbye Podcast YouTube, on Mike Feeney Comedy YouTube, on Mike Cannon Comedy YouTube, at I am Mike Cannon, at I am Mike Feeney, all of our social media, that stuff is worth dollars and cents to us. People look at that. We can leverage jobs. We can leverage offers. Our rate goes up with the numbers. So it's literally you guys putting money in our pockets by by adding no money of your own. So please do that. Subscribe. I have one final date, which is actually tonight. If you're listening live, you may be able to get there at the very tail end of the show. But it's Point Pleasant, New Jersey, Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club. Tonight, one show only, 8 p.m., limited seating. I think there might be a handful of tickets left, if that. Um, um, but it's probably my last hour for the year. I have no road dates set up. Feeney at least has some for 2021, so at least he knows he's going to be a stand-up comedian next year. Comics have, Malik and Son, the yeah. first week anyway. <laughs> yeah, I have I have no clue if this career is for me after twelve after tonight. So please, uh, please come out, support, listen to the albums. Get the special, yeah, special is up on YouTube, Life Begins, Mike Cannon Comedy on YouTube. I got, I think it just kicked in. My first hour is up there as well. Pass those around. Tell your friends. Again, financially supporting us is fantastic. If you can't do those, we super rely on word of mouth support. So please help us out. Hell yeah. Alex, where, are you, where can people find you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at I am Alex Scar. And check out my podcast, Broad Topics, T-O-P-I-X, with Kim Congdon. It's right here on gasdigitalnetwork.com slash live every Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Or yeah. you can catch it for free on iTunes and YouTube every Monday. That's right. Hell yeah. Uh, Alex, you got that video close by, right? Because yes. I'm just going to tease it up here. So we, oh, uh, also, let's do this. So we're going to record a video eventually. I don't know if we can do it today because I, I have to fucking go and drive. But just to let you guys know for our YouTube yeah. the viewers, I want to explain something because we get a couple of really wildly aggressive messages every once in a while that are like, you already aired this video, fuck face. Or what's with the double premiere? Jesus Christ, you idiots don't know what you're doing. It's like, listen... The Thursday premiere of each of our episodes at 6 p.m., it plays live for that hour. Once that hour is up and it's already showcased live, it will be put back down to restricted. So you can no longer find it. It's no longer on our channel. You can then, watch it for right then immediately on GasDigitalNetwork.com. That's right. Then it comes out for free again on Monday where it will live until it ages out of 15 weeks. Yes. So we want to be clear with this. The YouTube channel, when it goes live... 
It's a live one-time play that we also negotiated for our viewers. So if you guys don't want to be on Gas Digital Network, if you don't have the funds, whatever it may be, you don't have to. But this was a special separate thing that we negotiated for our listeners to be able to get our content early. Then it, promote, it premieres on Monday properly and continues its run. Just stop bitching. Understand what we're doing. It's all for your benefit. We're not trying to be like, we're not trying to pull the wool over your eyes, you fucking paranoid, delusional maniacs. <laughs> like, just understand, we're all here. You're getting it for free. And a, and a fun little silly dumb announcement. I think starting tomorrow, I'm, well, I'm going to at least do it tomorrow. Who knows how much I'll do it after that. But I'm bringing back Feeny's Friday oh. Cocktail Hour, baby. So come in my Instagram live at 5 p.m. Have a drink with me. Start your weekend off right. I talk to people. Sometimes I let people in and we just talk to strangers. And it's fun and always nice. terrifying. Yeah. Um, Mike, we have another awesome sponsor this week. And that is Omigo. Omigo. Guys, it's the holiday season. The We're holiday all... season. Nama, nama, nina. Omigo will clean up your butt. And Hole. You'd... <laughs> Boy, do I jump off rhythm pretty quickly. <laughs> just to suffice, just to, I don't know what words I'm using. But suffice. guys, Omigo, it's the holiday season. My point is that we're all eating wild. We're gaining a bit of weight. Our bowels are erratic. Why not make wiping a non-issue with Omigo Bidet? They're a modern bidet brand changing your bathroom experience because toilet paper is gross. You don't it's really outdated. have a truly fresh, clean feeling. Yeah, you might as well wipe your ass with a Scantron. <laughs> yeah. And you better have a number two pencil, otherwise it's not picking up your answers. I got a number two poopsel. Oh. <laughs> Guys, I, we've said it before, we'll say it again. B having a bidet is unbelievable. You're power washing your ass. It feels like you're getting your cornhole licked by a cat. It is pleasurable. Not a cat, because that would be unpleasurable, because they have very sharp, disgusting No, no, tongues. it's rough, so it's cleaning. It's getting the whole thing off. Yeah, I just go with the dog dung. It's watery, it's wet, no, it's softer. No, that's sloppy. You don't feel clean after that. After a cat- if it's water and not a mouth, you would feel clean. No, because a cat cleans themselves with their tongue, and it's so rough yeah, but that I don't it can want remove- a cat licking my asshole. That sounds yeah, that, painful. It sounds like somebody that's never had it done. Yeah, I, 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 riddle me to guilty, I guess. <laughs> riddle me to guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I, we've never had the title of the episode being an ad, but that's it. <laughs> so, guys, you just got to get a bidet, and why not get an Omigo bidet? These aren't your old school bidets. They attach right to your toilet. Super easy. No need to call a plumber. It's a DIY install and takes about 15 minutes. It's a complete game changer. They have a bidet for every toilet, every bud, and every budget. And here's the real game changer. We have a offer for just our listeners. We go to myomigo.com slash goodbye. That's M-Y-O-M-I-G-O dot com slash goodbye. And take 15% off today. Right now. That's not yesterday. That's not tomorrow. That's right now. You Hurry. go to my myomigo.com m-y-o-m-i-g-o dot com slash g-o-o-d-b-y-e and take 15% off 15% it's a chunk of change just to get your chunks removed hey. from your change purse get a bidet today let's get back to the show so I get the camera and the next day it's great because I spend the whole night watching tutorials figuring out all the ins and outs of this camera so many bells and whistles it's overwhelming but fucking awesome Awesome. So I am the next day shooting something. We're at Sagalo's place and uh, we're waiting for some people to come over. And I kind of am just watching Sagalo, you know, tidy up and get his life together a little bit to try and figure out what's happening with you. <laughs> this chair is maybe the most un uh, uncomfortable piece of equipment I've ever, like, leaned my ass on. <laughs> I feel this whole thing is, like, set up to give you dead hamstrings. There's nothing to lean your legs on. Yeah, I tuck them back. Oh, dude, I'm trying my best, yeah. but I'm not flexible, and it's just beating my hamstrings to death, <laughs> and I feel like I'm trying to sit side saddle like a good lady yeah, on a horse. you are. You I are know. side saddling. I really am. <laughs> so... So I'm watching. Uh, so for one of the one of the scenes, we needed uh, eggs, but specifically we got we wanted to keep the shells. So uh, so we you know we cracked open you know six eggs or something like that, and Sagalo was like, ah, oh, what the hell am I gonna do with these? I guess I just pour them down the drain. And I was like, why don't you cook them? Yeah. Like we have like we have like a half hour until ah, people come over. Too much protein and nutrition. Well, first he goes, he goes, oh okay. <laughs> so I go, why don't you why don't you oh, cook them? Like why don't you cook them? And he, I'm like, just you know, whisk it and then put it in the frying pan. It's it's so easy to cook eggs. And he's like, okay, yeah, yeah, cool, okay. Whisk so, like what? Like like to, like take it to an island? So I start <laughs> so I start setting up the lighting and I hear him going like, I don't even know how this is going right now. And I walk in. 
He's holding them in like um like a pint glass. Yeah. And he's got the eggs in. And he's just using a knife and just like Oh. Just just like uh, stirring it like you would chocolate into chocolate sure. milk. And not breaking the yolk. Not whatsoever. breaking the just yolk. Just kind of just, moving it around. Just moving fast. it around. And I go, what do you. I go, first off, get like a fork. And then I go, watch like this. And then I start doing it. He goes, I'm creating an egg lava lamp. Yeah. And he goes, <laughs> I start whisking it. And he goes, oh, that's whisky. And so. <laughs> oh, no. And so I'm like, yeah, you know. And he goes, oh, man, I got to like. He's clear he's, he's never cooked, you know? So yeah. he goes, all right, so I got to. Do you know I, what we should do? What? We should film a, a, like an adult for idiots guide to Sagala. Like we should teach him basic adult life skills. That's what I guess this was. This was the first experience. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you are literally, uh, you're a good mother in that moment, teaching your 29-year-old <laughs> son yeah. how to break a fucking yolk to make scramby eggs. So, I just, so I'm realizing even before the, the breaking of the yolk thing, initially he was like, he was like, should I, he put a, two of them aside or whatever, a couple aside, and he goes, should I, should I just chug this and we'll like put it on Patreon or something? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, if you want to eat raw eggs, go ahead and do it. I don't know. And then he was like, he was like, kid, he's like, no, you get sick, right? I was like, Rocky did it. And he was like, Rocky did it? All uh, right, all right. So let's pull up the video because he wanted, again, this was his idea, his idea. Rocky did it. That's who Brendan should be Here comparing himself to. Egg yolks. Brendan's this is only two of them. And getting the best shape of his life. You see the whey protein. I've I've never so done this. Before. He looks good. Just so we can yes, compliment Brendan a little pounds. bit. Yeah, he looks good. And here we are. Have you done this before? The, yeah. I told him What's he needs like? to not do the AJ McLean fucking like beard like line. Yeah, yeah. He won't puke it up. It's like goldfish. <laughs> he said he won't puke it up. Okay. Do I? Should I have a bucket ready? No. I'm very. Should I have another it's cup? Just, just eggs. To puke in? The egg bucket challenge. But you have to do it. You have to go like. This isn't just eggs. <laughs> what is it? This is egg yolk. Uh, okay. Oh, water. <laughs> let's pause. Water. Let's. <laughs> oh, did he? What, he say he put water in it? No, he was just like it's eggs and water. I get like he like didn't. Brendan is such a, a sweet dolt that he like. I mean, he's like it's Lovable. not just eggs. It's also yolk. Yeah, that's a part of the egg, <laughs> my friend. It's like saying like this isn't my arm. That's a hand. There's fingers on them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's play it. You have to do it really fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew he was gonna do it like this too. I knew he wasn't just gonna open his throat. He was gonna baleen whale with the teeth and just have it filter through. Rocky, that was his whole thing. Uh, Rocky, he said. <laughs> I mean, go rewind it again, Alex. Oh, I'm a texture guy. You can see, <laughs> you can see it. You can see the second yolk. He closes his teeth uh, right there, uh, 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 and it hits his teeth, and he just doesn't let it in. So he just breaks the egg yolk in his mouth. I feel like you're like a 65 year old gay guy leading an 18 year old gay guy through his first <laughs> sexual experience. You're like, no, no, you got to keep it and swish it around a bit. Yeah, watch, dude. I mean, it's so fun to watch him. Open your throat. I know. I like it when he goes, I'm Rocky. <laughs> oh. No. Oh. I, I can't. I'm the texture guy. I can't do that. I'm a texture guy. That's Brendan. I'm a texture guy. Sagalo I think he guys. said I'm the texture guy. <laughs> <laughs> also, he didn't even need a fork. That was like perfect wisping in his fucking dumb mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so he does. So we open the next four. He can whisk it. I help him whisk it. And he goes, I'm going to. He goes, oh, I just put him on a frying pan. I go, yeah, just get some butter. Pop that in there. Heat it up there. Salt, pepper. You're done. Just that's it. And he was like, okay. I go back to setting up the lights, setting up the camera and everything. I I come. I, I, I see him. He walks into the living room. Holding the frying pan. And there's three live chicks on it. <laughs> they do this right. He's like, I think I, I, I think I incubated these into life. Yeah. So he's, he's going, ah, dude, this isn't working. This isn't gonna work. And I go, why? And he goes, and he comes in with a cold pan that was never even thought about heat going towards it. And he goes, he's just holding just the pan, and he goes, the butter isn't like spreading. And he is. Cold spreading ice cold butter around the entire pan before he put it on heat. He thought he had to like coat the entire pan in cold before. butter. Yeah, yeah. Like, and he's like, look, it just keeps breaking in the knife. And I go, well, because heat is too easy. I go, put it on the flame and then put the butter. You know what's real? He was like, 
I think he was buttering the outside of the pan too. Oh like it was my just God. like so. So I go, "There's no way this is what you're doing." So then I go, "Just put it on the thing." So he goes it back and, it, and he. You laughs. didn't do it for him, did you? Of course not. And oh, good. Like, okay, glad. I'm glad because this is how. People go through their whole lives doing dumb shit like this. Is to do the oh, I'd never and even you, done the, you, the Aggies. Uh, yeah, like yeah. I know I know how ideas. So he so he goes. I go just turn on the. I go turn it on. He goes. Oh yeah, that, that makes more sense. So then he goes in there and he turns on the stove and this is all I hear. I, I hear. Like when you're turning yeah, on the pilot yeah, yeah. light and I go, Brendan, <laughs> Brendan, is there a flame? If there's a flame, get it off the ticking. And he was like, "What?" And I and then he turns the whole thing off, and then he turns it back on, and I just hear a prolonged. And I go like running in there. I'm like, "You're gonna blow up the whole fucking house, man!" And I go, "Look, tick, tick, tick." And then you turn it, and he was like, "Oh, okay." His fucking rights should be taken away. This kid cannot live on his own. He can't like. And of of course, he's like, he's like, all right, relax, relax, dude. It's my favorite thing. It's my favorite thing when something so simple, and I don't want to bag on Brendan, even though I'm going to continue to do so for as long as this plays out. But I mean, come on, dude. The, the, the defensiveness after being like, I'm trying to help you out, dude. Yeah. Like, what happened yesterday? Last night we were recording something, and and we like just proved him wrong gently on something. And he's like, Jesus Christ. And we're like, you don't get to do <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't fame victimhood and then put the onus on us for reacting to something that you just said that wasn't in the diction. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's what it was. He said some like non actual English word and was like, well, you guys know. We're yeah, like, no, yeah. we don't. Like, we can't guess. You're not my one and a half year old son. I'm not going to say. It, it, Brendan just said buckaball, so yeah. I know he meant basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he goes, so he starts, you know, he's be like, relax, I'm not like an egg chef, you know, whatever. So I go, I, you know. <laughs> I just look like Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, so he makes <laughs> so he makes the eggs, and then he's like, you know, so we, you know, I, I guide his hand through it. He makes the eggs and stuff, and he takes them off. And then he's just, and then the best part is, is he had to shoot a scene where he's lying in bed uh, with the with this other comedian, and they're like close talking, and he's just eating six eggs, and then he was like, and he like holds the eggs up there, he's like eggs, you know, and she's like, no, maybe after, maybe after, and he's like, all oh, right, yeah, yeah, so he puts the eggs down, he swishes his mouth, and then they go into the scene. <laughs> but it was just like a whole thing where you're uh, like, how do people live and how have you survived this long? That's our friend Brendan. Uh, that's our guy. friendin. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Brendan. the thing is I, I, I'm i giving him a tough time, but that's probably exactly how I would be if I never you know, got to live with Nicole. Yeah. Is she gave me the Adulthood for Dummies playbook. She mm-hmm. taught me how to cook eggs. I cooked. I learned how to cook in college. I mean, you were an only child, so you had to. It, like, it, I mean, that Only stu- child doesn't mean you're a latchkey kid. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> You had no friends, no influence, and nobody would talk to you, so you were home alone in the house that you thought you owned by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so you had to cook eggs. I'm sure you made your own Thanksgiving once yeah, it or was, twice. It was, it was, yeah, it was, I either was cooking or I was riding a tricycle down a long hallway. <laughs> yeah, Mom missed Christmas a bunch. I'm yeah. sure you were opening gifts by yourself if she even had time to leave gifts yeah. out. I understand what your youth was like. Brendan, I mean, was coddled from the moment he came out of the womb, and it's unbelievable how defensive and angry he is about oh, what great he treatment this. he's gotten from people. Once he hears this, he be like yeah, you guys, that's not, you guys a, that's not even close. You guys just got it wrong. It's like I just didn't learn because I didn't feel like it. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's like Shut that's for up. that's for conformists. Shut the fuck I'm up. an artist, you know. Like I do art, and I don't necessarily learn what other people learn. I know other stuff. <laughs> what? How to tattoo your fucking hand with that a, does with though, a big pen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so that was just. Insane, uh, of course. That's right. Well, th- you know, to to stick on the uh, the Brenton train. <laughs> I tell you, so another one. I did. Uh, I mean, I did another show where I just assumed I had COVID right after it. It right. was an indoor Connecticut show. You get there, and I'm excited to do it. It's you know, it, as I, I'm like. I'm trying to stay off social media and news and stuff yeah. like that. So you're kind of my update in terms. I of, am. Yeah, for more or less for like COVID numbers yeah, yeah. and stuff. So I I hear how things are going from you, and it's usually right as I'm about to enter what appears to be <laughs> the most dangerous situation of all time. Because as we're driving to Connecticut, Feeney's like, you know, their their uh, transmission rate is up to seventy eight percent, and Brendan and I are like, whatever. And then Brendan, we we get we go to a a, a restaurant. 
right before uh, that the uh, <laughs> right before the show, and we're eating. We're having a great. Not comment. the one I recommended. Not the one you recommended because that was closed. Oh right. yeah, we drove directly to that, and it looked like not only did it was it closed, but it hasn't been open for decades. <laughs> Google said it was currently open. I know. Well, Google has uh, outdated information. Yeah. So we we drive to this other place. We're having a meal, and Brendan gets that gets this call. And he looks, he's got eyebrows down, concerned the entire time. By the way, this is Brendan Sagalo. Follow him at, at Brendan Sagalo. He's, he's hilarious. He's a great comedian. Patreon. He's a, he's just a true buffoon in the best ways possible. Lovable oaf. Lovable oaf. Lovable oops. So yeah. we, uh, we're sitting there and he gets this phone call and he's like, yeah, okay. So when did he test positive? And I'm like, I'm like, what? And he's like, and I'm like, wait, is this about you? You and he's like, so he gives me the one. Yeah, he like puts it this close to my face too, and he's like, you know, trying to like, this is my agent. Like, hang on one second, and I'm like, okay. And I grit my teeth, and I yeah. think I like ordered more chicken fingers just because I was pissed. And, <laughs> and then he's like, uh, well, I don't know. I think I had a mask on, and just knowing Brendan, no, he didn't. Yeah, uh, or if he did, it was just holding up his second chin. Yeah, it was so chin diaper. <laughs> <laughs> so he, you know, he's like, okay, uh, all right, nah, I'm probably good. And I'm like, okay. And he hangs up and I'm like, what was that? And he's like, oh, so and so has COVID. And then they were with this person. And then I was with them and uh, we were just hanging. And, and uh, you know, I, I think we're fine. And I'm like, oh, what part of your medical degree did you use to figure that out? <laughs> yeah. what, what study did you balance that information and then, you know, figure out your risk level? Yeah. And he's like, shut up, dude. Like, again, the defensive level when yeah. I'm asking for something reasonable. And I'm like, OK, so you were exposed. And he's like, I don't know if you can call it that. And I'm like, well, that's exactly what you call it. That's, that's the what, only thing. You that's call what it. happens. It's like. Okay, we've been in a car for this long. It is what it is. Should we wear masks now? Like, I don't even know what to do. Yeah. We both kind of threw that out the window. We're like, I guess we've been in the car for two hours at this point. It's it's circulating. Crack our a window. Yeah, it's it's whatever. We didn't. Um, <laughs> but so we shit. I forget what the rest of this is. So we finish the meal. Brendan like pushes that aside as if it's nothing. We oh, when we parked into the dr into the parking lot of this restaurant. This we're we're starting to smoke, right? Because it's like a couple hours before the show. We're gonna get a meal. We start smoking individually, our own blunts. And this guy in like a Ford Taurus or some kind of beater that's like it's like a very generic car, whatever it is, it's like the car everybody has, mm -hmm. just pulls in doing like a hundred and twenty into this parking lot. I'm i I'm shocked one of the hubcats didn't like roll yeah, off and yeah, kill yeah. some kid. Yeah. Um but he like gets out of his car, he's like three hundred and fifty pounds, dressed in sweatpants and a carhartt jacket. He's got like a, a piss stain on his pants and like open toed fucking sandals yeah. in 38 degree weather and he just comes out of his car and he's like oh he's like what about this virus <laughs> literally directly to us makes eye contact with me and I as as you know if you listen to the show I am just a homing beacon for conspiracy yeah, for theorists. social domination <laughs> it's it's insane this guy gets out stretches and goes oh you boys what do you think about this virus he's like that fucking dr. Fusi is a home <laughs> like, uh -huh. like gets his name wrong in the most hilarious way possible and I Brendan and I look at each other and as it, and through this is great friends, right? You're just friends. Yeah. You you know each other so well. We both talked with our eyes where we were like, just say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't push back. There's no reason to. We're not going to get to a place of truth with this man sure. at this point. So he's just like, I mean, the masks are bullshit. Every this fucking this vaccine's going to turn everybody into a mathematician. He's like, <laughs> it's like literally just banging every conspiracy theory possible. And we're like, I know, right? It's so crazy, it's dude. Crazy. But yeah, you'd never believe it. I can't, you know, so wild. And uh, <laughs> And so we finally, we get past that guy. We go to uh, another, I think we went to two restaurants or maybe maybe just this is the same one. So we go to that restaurant again and we're sitting outside. We're dining outside because this is right after we found Brendan to be a potential outbreak monkey. Yeah. And there's heaters. There's those big giant heater lamps that like go up. It looks like yeah. you could line like a town main street with them and it right. would look very yeah, Christmassy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they're on uh, either side of Brendan and I. I'm I'm piping hot. I'm feeling great. I like you know even unzip my jacket a little bit because I was sweating. And Brendan, I guess, was standing in or sitting in the two by two area that neither heat would hit. <laughs> and so he he's like you know trying to like talk to the waitress and he's like, do you mind if I like 
pull this over and let you know and I'm like I'm like dude that's like it's a six foot tall thing yeah like, it's got wheels on it it looks like it's kind of a situation yeah. to mo- and it's on fire yeah yeah it's literally on fire right now it's like it might not be the best and she's like okay like it, like was like ah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's okay. Like, yeah, yeah. And so Brendan, of course, like, you know, is it kind of gets it. Half the thing is like falling apart yeah. while he's doing it. So he's like, you know, catching parts as they're <laughs> falling off. And then, you know, and then he bucks it back onto his shoulder, pushes it forward. The flame goes out. He puts it right next to the table. It's out. It's non functional. <laughs> so he has to go inside, get the waitress, and say, by the way, that thing I convinced you to let me yeah. move is now broken. He tries to turn on the gas. It's just going. He did! <laughs> he did. <laughs> That's when you want to make your Irish goodbye.